What is going on guys, today I'm going to show you how to make advanced materials using Endu. So last time, or at least in my first video, I showed you how to make advanced materials using um, Crazy Bump. But today I'm going to show you how to use Endu because you might prefer Endu to Crazy Bump. So today I'm going to pretty much make this cobblestone texture. So the one you can see here I think was already made in Endu. Originally I made it in Crazy Bump and then I converted it to Endu because I preferred Endu. So all of these were Crazy Bump, but today I'll be showing you how to make cobblestone texture in Endu. Alright, so let's get started. So you open up your Photoshop and Endu. Get your seam seam seamless material and click the end button. I'm a little bit tired so I'm messing up my words here and there. Alright, do not click that if your material is not in Photo Normal Presets. So click Photo Normal Presets and find your material if it's not in there you do have to click that but cobblestone is so scroll down you can type it in as well so if you can't find it just by scrolling down you can just type in cobblestone and it'll be right there and because we've got the document open we can just click active doc and make sure it's tileable is on if it's a tileable texture which it should be um, it's always easier to work with tileable textures so activate doc This will take a while depending on what material you've got. Oh, there we go. And then start, you get you'll get all of these settings come up. There we go. And start messing around with these to get the material you want. And if you want to see a result, you can click that button and you'll get this preview. And then we want to click here and go open 3DO custom loader. And at the moment we want to open the normal by clicking that. This will do it from the dock you've got open. So It'll open it from here. If we go back to this one, our albedo, and just click that, it'll put the color on as well. Right, so first we're messing with the normals. So we have to edit this to get some nice normals. So if I, um, I don't want too much fine detail, so I'll turn it down a little bit because I don't want these little specks to come up in the normals. So we'll turn that down. So this is all dependent on what your material is going to be. If your material, if your material doesn't have much normals in it, you're going to want to turn a lot of stuff down. I actually thought that was a smudge on my screen just there. Um, if it's got quite deep normals on it, you're going to want to obviously turn a lot of everything up. So we're going to turn some extremes up, turn that up, turn that up a little bit. That. There we go. We want them to really separate from the dirt. And there it is. All right. That's pretty good so far. It's looking good in our map. All right, then we can jump back to our color map and go map. Actually, no, stay in your normals. Click here and go map converter. And we're going to want to convert this to our specular. Unreal doesn't actually use specular, but I'll talk you through that in a minute to how you can just sort of alternate between specular and roughness. All right. All right, there you go. Now let's load this through quick. So open our 3D launcher again. Um, 3DO custom loader, sorry. I'm going to keep it on, I keep closing it. And let's go gloss. And let's take off specular. There you go. So if we take off gloss, oh, I think we'll go to default. So we, we could load it up with specular, but essentially we're going to be using gloss or roughness anyway in Unreal. So just click gloss. You'll get your glossy effect from everything. And then we're going to start editing this to make it so the gaps will be black because I want the gaps to be shiny and the rocks to be dry as if it's sort of rained and then an hour later the rocks dried up but the dirt isn't quite dry yet. All right, so we're going to want that really bright like that. There you go. Just mess with his settings to get something you really like. And that, that looks pretty good so far. And you're not going to really see it on a preview at the moment unless we invert it right now. Because um, white in here will be coming up reflective, but black in Unreal is. Um, black in Unreal is shiny, white is rough. So it's not going to quite come up on here what we quite need. But I don't really want to mess around with the Photoshop document before getting into Unreal. So we're going to leave it making the rock shiny and the dirt 
rough. Alright, so now let's make our next map, which will be, if I click this, map converter. So make sure you go back to your normal map. Um, our AOs, it's still our AOs now. And all of these have their own the, all of these have their own custom sliders, so you can just mess around. I'm gonna make mine like that. Mm. And, uh, if you double click oh click once in like the actual shade colour you can start messing around with it. It's looking better. Go into a large detail. Make it softer. And turn on the detail a little bit. Well was it turned all the way down? See all the way down. What does that look like? Okay. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, make sure that's loaded in. I've closed my custom loader again. Right. Make sure that's loaded in. So just go AO. There you go. That's just loaded it in. It's looking pretty good. Always looks really good on the um, dark side when you put your AOs in. It's looking pretty good so far. And now for our actual displacement map so to do this let's go map converter again and we'll go high tool round and we'll go activate active dock now this is going to look really awful on your sphere because what it's doing is really bumping out where it's white um, I mean that they are pretty good so far if I turn it up want it to pretty much but they would basically want it black in the gaps kind of like our um, specular map I mean, specular map, I'm personally making it reflective in the gap. So if we go back to my specular, I personally want it reflective in the gap. You don't have to, but because of that, it looks pretty similar to our displacement map. But um, if you get this and you create a new layer quick and you just quickly draw a white over the top, because this is obviously too strong. And then we turn this down to like, let's go 75. And then we just reload it. Click off quick. Uh, click down to height where we were editing before and just quickly do a quick refresh by clicking on a slider or moving the slider should I say there you go so now that looks a lot better and they're actually coming out you can see they're coming out but I'm not going to be doing tessellation I'm going to be doing this normal bump offset so in a way we're not going to be using this map to its full potential but um, yeah so pretty much save all your maps out make sure when you do save this one do take off the white overlay so you save it as that so save them all out so save as target and I've got a file with already all of them in I'm going to resave my displacement but all of these are pretty much the same I mean I'll quickly resave them out just in case I've made minor changes that was in a weird location test uh, our normals got our specular what roughness should I say because you use roughness maps in Unreal and our AOs. So I'd like to point out that this will be different depending on what material you're doing, obviously. So for different materials you want it to be shiny in different places and whatnot. But this is actually looking pretty good so far with what we got. I mean I like at the tops because it all goes funky, but um, that pretty much is working. Yeah. So save all of them out. Like I said, make sure you don't have the white overlay that I just made on this and save them all out and jump back into Unreal. All right, now we're back in Unreal. Let's go to our folder that we have our new stuff and quickly drag our new material on here. So just right click and say new material and you'll get your new material come up. And then we're gonna wanna drag in all of our, all of our um, textures we just made. So grab them all and just drag them all in here. Wait for that circle of a line to leave. Here you go and just let go. Alright, that seems good. Now I'll just drag all of them into your material. Drag them to the side, let's full screen our material. And let's start messing around with it. So that is our AO. So let's connect that up. That's our color map. So connect that up to base color. Our displacement, we'll deal with that in a second. Let's make this a flat plane. There you go. Our AO, no, our roughness. Now this will be wrong, and it looks weird about your normals anyway. Let's quick button that was in. There you go. Yeah, this will be wrong because is it wrong? No, it's pretty pretty much right. 
the only thing wrong is it's too sparkly in the gaps so you sort of edit this just hold a and left click put it there and this is pretty much what this node does an add node so holding a and left click what it pretty much does is it will start adding a color to it and we just want to add a little bit of white so let's make that um, if you hold one and left click you'll get a um one constant and what one constant is it's from like if I drag this all the way down or to minus should I say it'll be black and if I drag it above zero it will start turning grey to white so we want it to be pretty much about there and we want to add that in and we want to connect this up to the roughness there you go it's a bit more damp it's damping the gaps but not like super sparkly like it was alright it's still not bumpy enough yet we need to set up our displacement map or our um, high bump map whatever you want to call it to do this I've actually got a video showing you how to do this but I'll show it again hold B and left click and you'll get a bump offset and connect up one of your color channels I always connect up red to height and connect this to all of if it connects to all of your texture samples except from your actual displacement one so connect that all up to all of them and now yep as you can see it's making them bump out. It's a bit strong. So I'm going to just turn it down to maybe 3, 5. So just click on your actual bump offset node and just edit it. And turn that down, I believe. I turn that up. Up a tiny bit more. There we go. And now that has all of the bump to it. As you can see, if I go around it. I mean, I could actually make the bump a bit stronger and set that to a, not a 5, 5 would be too strong. Actually, 5 isn't too bad, I'll leave it at 5. And just click OK. And because we've already applied the basic material to it, it should change. There we go. And well, uh, the normals are a bit strong. The bump offsets, let's quickly get back into that. Turn it back to a 0.4. Turn it down. Turn it up. This is very fiddly, you've sort of got to mus mus mess around to it, looks uh, really nice. I'm going to set back to a 3.5 because 3.5 looks like it works perfectly. Right, but yeah, you can mess around with that as much as you want to make it look right. So yeah, now if we click OK, we, ha oh, we have our basic material, or should I say our advanced material, using our using Endu to make all the maps for it. Alright, so I hope that helped everyone sort of understand. As you can see, this material is the same pretty much as this one, but I'll just show you how to quickly do it in Endo. Yep, I hope this helped anyone understand how to make it, uh, make uh, just basic, just sort of all your materials in Endo. Yep, I hope this helps everyone. Thank you very much for watching, and bye bye.